So let's put the Orion XS through its paces, shall we? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Off Grid, and in this episode we will be taking a good look at the Orion XS DC-DC charger, which is the latest of the DC-DC chargers from Victron. This would be the old, very well-known, familiar 12-12-30 amp, and the excess can go up to 50 amps, so quite a big improvement. Miles smaller than this, no cooling fins on here, but we'll be taking you through that, so let's get to it, shall we? Right at the start, I just want to point out what our biggest disappointment is, just so we get that out of the way, because you'll, I reckon quite a few folk will be wondering how this actually ties in with the Servo GX. As we all know, we've been waiting, this has got a V direct cable, which is plugged in there, it goes into the servo over there and as you can see there is nothing there and when we go to the device list it's not shown there. So at this point in time the excess does not do anything on the servo GX landscape. We have followed a few threads on the Victron, Victron community site and I think they've had quite a few uh, reasonably upset people about that saying come on you know you should have actually got your ducks in a row and got the firmware ready in this. But assuming they're going to get that done shortly, they won't release a date, which is fairly standard for software firms because then everybody holds them to the date. So they they have more or less said that they will be implementing it because uh, why would they have the VE Direct port if they weren't going to? So they are going to do it, but we have absolutely no idea when it will be done and whether it will be in this version of uh, the Venus operating system. Right, so to take you through everything, so we come in to a smart chunt, which is connect connected directly to the Lynx distributor, and on the positive side we come into an isolator. So the Lynx distributor is then obviously connected to via the 70 mil cables to the Multiplus, and via these 16 mil cables coming around to the Orion XS. From the Orion, we've got a cable coming out to this uh, Anderson connector. The Anderson connector, we have a fuse over here and then connected directly onto the battery. So obviously here's the uh, Servo GX with its uh, screen. And when we do connect panels, we got the MPPT controller there, but for now we don't have any panels. So we're going to close this bonnet to quieten things down. As you can see, here's the app showing what you see on the status screen. So our voltage, our engine voltage is currently 12.6. No current, no power flowing through. The outgoing voltage is showing 12.1. So let's get the engine started. <coughs> Right, so we've got the, the Hilux running. Bear in mind, this is just idling at the moment. And it is, as you can see by the smart shunt, we're putting 40 amps into the battery. There's nothing connected and turned on at the moment. So pretty much just to actually one or two amps to run everything. So we're putting in just under 40 amps. And as you can see from the app, we're actually, according to this, we were putting in 44 amps from the DC-DC. So I'm going to take you through the settings in quite a lot of detail. But you can see it's a, it's a little bit frustrating that this is not actually shown directly on here, but we are waiting for an update so that they actually show us exactly what this is actually doing on here. But it is quite nice to see 40 amps flowing directly into the battery from the DC-DC. But I know the question that you're asking yourself right now is why, why do we not see 50 amps? And there are two reasons, and I'll take you through them. First reason is that we're only idling now. If somebody was to go and run this a lot faster, get the alternator voltage up, we would see quite a big increase in coming. When we did it earlier, we were going up to 45 amps coming through the DC-DC. So very close to the 50 amp. The other reason I'm going to take you through this app now, I think based on what everybody has said on the various forums, the, the absolute main question that everybody will be asking is how hot is this getting? How efficient is it really? One of the big concerns with these traditional 30 amps, these big cooling fins are really are necessary. You need them to cool this unit down. As we've seen, this unit has no cooling fins and when I feel it, it's putting 40, 44 amps out of this thing and I can't feel anything. There is no 
no discernible heat buildup that I can actually detect on this. It's early, so at the end of the video we'll check it again and see if it's got even got slightly warm. But at this, by now, that would be quite warm, whereas this is nice and cool. So I think they have hit their target of the efficiency that they stay. Quite impressive, really. Just taking you through the, the screen now. So this is the status screen. So it's telling us quite a lot more information when compared with the original 30 amp. So we're seeing the voltage, current and power coming from the engine. And then we're seeing the voltage, current, power going into the, uh, into the battery. Uh, at the moment the voltages are quite low because we need to rev that up and it's charging this battery up. But yeah, it's quite handy seeing that. It's been frustrating that we are not able to see that on the app beforehand. So really handy that we can see that. I'm not going to take you through the graph history of trends. That's pretty much the same as the other one, but I do want to take you through the setup. So in the normal way, this starts off as, you know, you need to select charger. And so the charger, you can enable or disable the charging facility right over here. So if we just click that, that will turn it off. And you can see up there that it has dropped right down. So let's re-enable it. And that is now re-enabling it. And after a second or two, we back up, climbing back up to... 40-ish amps going in. So quite nice to have that so easily accessible. Two completely new features that you would not see in the other ones, which is in this one, is that you can limit the uh, input current. So you can just change that to whatever you want. If you don't have an alternator capable of uh, 50 amps, then you can limit it. Um, in actual fact, this alternator is only an 85 amp alternator. So uh, I wouldn't expect this to do terribly well. Um, it's actually getting a bit warm. So I would, if I was running this in, in my Hilux permanently, I would uh, limit this. You can also limit the outgoing current. So we leave those at 50. In the normal way, you can select your battery. So we've selected Smart Lith Lithium Life PO4 and the absorption is 14.2 and, and the storage voltage 13.5. So that's quite standard. And here, let's just discuss the engine shutdown. This looks very similar to the previous models of the, of the Orions, and actually it is pretty much exactly the same. We were really curious to see if the XS does adaptive charging based on the voltage coming from the, the alternator, from the starter battery, and we can confirm it definitely does. So if we were to We've chosen user-defined settings because we've chosen our start voltage is 13.5 and our delayed start is 13. So if we were to make those standard, say, regular alternator, which is what this is, which will take that to 14, we would drop down the, the amps that it produces would drop down quite considerably. So yes, it does do adaptive charging based on the input voltage that it gets from the starter battery. So if if you if it's charging a little bit too too lightly for you, you want it to, to go to a heavier current, you may need to drop these two values down. You don't need to drop the bottom two, we just the, the start and the delayed start to something like this. You could even drop them down a little bit more and it would still be quite safe. And that would enable it to produce even more power. So so get charge at a high current. So interesting that that feature or well, that issue is still with this excess. Good to know we would just adjust these and use, use defined settings rather than the standard ones. The input voltage lockout is exactly the same and I'd leave those as they are. So that's your setting screen done. Quite nice, but what I really like about this thing is this status screen. So yeah, that's, that's looking good for me. And we're putting in just a few amps less than 40, but the the device itself is producing 42.7 amps at the moment. The rest is being used by the, the system. Right, now that we've spoken for a few minutes, just to see, we'll, we'll get the FLIR camera shortly, but just to see if there's, there's just no heat buildup at all, none whatsoever. This is quite amazing. It's an IP65 device, meaning it can be mounted where it gets reasonably damp, even in the engine compartment, I suppose and it's completely cool, and I'm, I'm really impressed with that. That's great. That's what we've been waiting for all this time. So we're gonna get a FLIR camera 
out and uh, take some images of that and just see what it looks like. This is the image from my Fleur camera. So you, I've stepped back so you can see the whole board. So there is the DC-DC, that's the servo, multiplus, etc. So if I come, I'm going to come right up to the XS and just show you the various temperatures. So on the unit we've gone up to 20, about 25, just under 25 is the hottest that I can see. If we come down to the actual cables, they go up slightly higher. They're going to about 30 degrees. So the, the hottest part of this whole thing are the cables. Even coming out of the connector there doesn't seem to be that hot. With the V direct cable comes in, it's warmed up a bit there, but I mean, at this point in time, those sort of temperatures are really nothing. But the unit itself, which we were really interested in, 24, just under 25. If I bring this up here, 20, just over 25, 26, that's the, so this seems to be the, uh, the hottest place here, if I show you with my finger. Um, and that is only 26 degrees and this has been running for quite some time now so really impressed if I feel it by hand it's really really quite cool you can hardly I mean the flare camera is telling us more information even these cables I can feel that they are slightly slightly warm but still really nothing Interestingly, this is showing that this screen is just about you know, 27. So it's showing the, the actual screen as having as much heat buildup as, as that has, which is quite amazing. So really impressed uh, with this. Uh, we are now going to do a similar test using this Orion. We'll just keep it loose and uh, see how they compare. Right, so we are about to test the original old uh, 12, 12 30, the Orion Tierra Smart. As you can see, as regards the, the settings, it's very similar, except that you can't specify the limit of the current in and out. But we've made the engine shut down exactly the same, so 13.5 and 13, so we can get an accurate reflection of that. So let's uh, fire up the engine and see how that does. As you can see, the status screen has far less information but we all know that we used to that screen. So it's just kicked in now, the wild kick in. It's starting to charge. We have no idea how much it's actually producing as we know that. Uh, it doesn't show any of that data. So it is charging. I'm gonna go into the BMS of the battery and uh, just check with that. There we are, we're putting in just under 30 amps. Sometimes it's just over, interestingly. That's fine, so we're putting in about 30 amps which is what we would expect from this. We needed to turn everything else off to, uh, to be able to read that. Yeah, so that's 20 amps, we're gonna, 28 amps, we're gonna run it for a while and then come back to you with a FLIR camera again and see what the heat buildup is in like this. We've got it flat, so it's not gonna be cooling efficiently. It'll take a while to warm up, but we're expecting this to be quite warm. Uh, in, in fact, I can feel the cooling fins are already starting to warm up, so expecting that to get a lot hotter than uh, the excess did. So we've run this test for about the same length of time as the other one. Uh, stepping back you can see which is the by far the warmest unit on the board. So let's, uh, and yes I know that we've had this down but we actually had it on its side like this for quite a while and it's going into the late 40s as you can see, so getting pretty warm compared to the other one. The other one got to, I think the hottest was 26 that it detected. Uh, this one we're going close to 50 now uh, in some places. And um, yeah, <clears throat> we, it's it's starting to get warm to the touch. I wouldn't call it hot. We've, we've felt these things, you can almost not hold your, you know, keep your hand on them, they get so hot. This is just now pleasantly quite warm, so it will continue building heat up. Even with the cooling fins, it will continue. And when it's in a locker somewhere, obviously there's not uh, anywhere for the uh, heat to escape. So on a hot summer day, it just gets hotter and hotter. So really looking forward to how this performs in like in a hot 
environment it should be a lot lot better than this what this will do when it gets warm is just to simply reduce its charge rate and I'm guessing that this would do the same but this being so efficient it uh, is going to probably give you a, a far better charge for a lot longer Be bear in mind that this is running at 30 amps at the moment this is running on about 40 44 amps so quite a lot of more power was going through this than this and uh, yeah this is already getting quite warm to the touch so there you have it folks the orion xs dc dc charger the replacement for the old big lumpy Thing with cooling fins that get so warm and only charges at 30 amps. I'm really looking forward to installing this into motorhomes. Firstly, it runs cool. Secondly, it's small. Thirdly, it takes bigger cables and it is capable of 50 amps and they can change the charge rate to something that suits their alternator or suits their battery or whatever. So I'm really And eventually forward. it's going to integrate into Venus yes. OS. And it will integrate into the uh, Venus operating system. This is available on our site, on our website, as a pre-order at this stage. I'd love to tell you that there is a load of stock available in the country, but Victron are still playing catch-up. They have uh, released it. It's flying out as fast as they can manufacture it, I think. But yeah, if you, if you pre-order, the price is a bit lower than what the ultimate price is going to be. So if you want to see this in person, uh, we'll be at all of the Warner shows, the Motorhome shows this year. There are about, about seven or eight of them around the country. We'll also be at NEC and uh, hope to uh, see you there. And uh, come, and look, come and look us up on the stand and uh, come and see for yourself. So hopefully this video is uh, informative for you and uh, this has hopefully sold you on the concept of buying the Orion XS because it will really make a big difference for you. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next episode. Cheers.